Hi, in this video, we'll be taking a closer look at how AC coupling systems work. AC coupling is a common practice to retrofit an energy storage system to an existing grid tie system. And it is considered AC coupling as the DC output of the solar array is converted to AC, then coupled to an energy storage system that converts the AC back to DC for storage in a battery bank. DC coupling, in comparison, transfers the DC solar directly to the DC battery bank. But how do both systems work together? Let's explore challenges that follow AC coupled systems with energy storage, their respected solutions, and of course, while still meeting regulatory and safety requirements. Before grid-tied inverters start providing those energy savings with solar power, they have a few grid requirements to meet. First, the grid must be present and sensed by the grid-tied inverter. Second, the grid must provide a stable voltage and frequency for five minutes. Once the grid is qualified, the grid-tied inverter will synchronize to the grid source and start pushing solar power to the home's electrical panel, and the excess power that is not consumed is exported to the grid. And third, in the event of a power outage, the grid tie inverter is required to shut down and cease solar production. As noted, a voltage source is required for the grid tie inverter to work. This is because grid tie inverters are a current source, meaning they are not designed to create their own voltage signal. On the contrary, a hybrid battery based inverter is a voltage source. So by replacing the grid with a hybrid battery based inverter, capable of delivering a grid quality voltage and frequency, you can essentially trick the grid tie inverter to think it's no other than the grid. Brilliant, right? So this takes care of the grid presence requirement. But what happens in the event of a power outage? And how can AC couple systems provide backup power without backfeeding the grid? Let's take a closer look at features that both grid tied and grid hybrid battery based inverters provide that make all this possible. Since both systems can export power to the grid, they meet the anti islanding UL 1741 and IEEE 1547 safety listings, which means in the event of a grid loss, they isolate themselves and stop exporting. However, the hybrid battery based inverter offers additional built in features that allow battery backup. This is possible due to its internal transfer switch. A hybrid battery based inverter, such as a Radian or Mojave, have built in transfer relays to alternate between states of inverting and accepting an AC source. From the input of the inverter, a source wire is fed from the house main panel to the AC input of the inverter versus the AC output of the inverter is connected to a protected loads panel. While connected to the grid, the inverter is in a pass-through state, meaning taking the grid source and simply passing it through its relay contacts out to the protected loads panel. In this state, the inverter does not modify the source. During a backup or inverting state, the AC input relay opens, isolating the grid from the hybrid inverter and preventing any backfeed while maintaining the output relay closed. This allows the inverted power from the batteries to power loads connected to the protected loads panel. Okay, now let's go through the same scenarios, but this time adding an AC coupled grid tight inverter. When retrofitting an energy storage system to an existing grid tight system, the grid tight inverter is moved from the main panel over to the protected loads panel. While grid connected, the hybrid battery based inverter is in a pass through state, providing the grid tie inverter the grid source. Once the grid tie inverter has completed its 5 minute source verification, it will begin pushing solar energy to the home. Anything not consumed by the loads, it will be exported back to the grid. In the event of a power outage, the hybrid battery based inverter will open its AC input relay isolating the grid and immediately begin inverting from the batteries 
providing backup power to the protected load panel. And since the grid tie inverter is coupled with the output of the hybrid battery based inverter via the protected load panel, it will think the grid just had a slight interruption and begin its 5 minute source verification. Once qualified, the grid tie inverter will begin augmenting the inverted battery power with solar energy. Any solar energy not consumed by the protected load panel, the hybrid battery based inverter will allow the excess solar energy to be utilized to charge the batteries. As the batteries get full, AC coupled systems require a method of regulating the grid tie inverter's solar power. This is to primarily prevent batteries from overcharging. Common methods are by either using a blackout relay or frequency shifting, or better known as frequency watt regulation. Frequency watt is a preferred method as this offers the best battery charging regulation extending the life of the battery. When utilizing the frequency watt regulation, the inverter will dynamically adjust its output frequency based on the amount of power needed. The higher the frequency, the lower the amount the power the grid tie inverter will provide. Once the grid source has been restored, the hybrid battery based inverter will go through its own 5 minute source verification, connect and pass through the grid to its output and continue normal operation. To check out a hands-on AC coupling demonstration with the Mojave ESS, check out the link below. To learn more about the Mojave platform, visit www.outbackpower.com forward slash Mojave or send us an email at sales at outbackpower.com. All right, thank you for watching and see you next time.